Anastasia, Book 1, Chapter 21 Touching Paradise Your brain is tired of listening to me and yet I still have so much I want to tell you. I do so want to, but you need to rest. Let us sit again for a little while. We sat down on the grass. Anastasia took me by the shoulders and drew me close to her. The back of my head touched her breasts, which gave me a pleasant warm feeling. Do not be afraid of me. Let yourself go, she quietly said and lay down on the grass so that it would be more comfortable for me to rest. She ran the fingers of one of her hands through my hair, as if combing them, while the fingertips of her other hand quickly touched my forehead and temples. Occasionally, she would lightly press down with her fingernails at various points on the top of my head all this gave me a feeling of tranquility, tranquility, tranquility and enlightenment. Then putting her hands on my shoulders, Anastasia said, Listen now, and please tell me what sounds you hear around you. I listen and my hearing caught a wide range of sounds, all different in tonality, rhythm, and continuity. I began naming the sounds aloud, the birds singing, and the trees, the chirping and clicking of insects in the grass, the rustle of the leaves, the fluttering and flapping of birds, birds' wings. I named everything I could hear, then fell silent and went on listening. This was pleasant and very interesting for me. You have not named everything, Anastasia observed. Everything, I replied. Well, maybe I left out something, not very significant, significant or something I didn't catch. Not anything important, that is. Vladimir, do you not hear how my heart is beating? Asked Anastasia. Could I really have not been paying attention to the sound, the sound of her heart beating? Yes. I hasten to respond. Of course I hear it. I hear it very well. It is beating evenly and calmly. Try to memorize the intervals of the various sounds you hear. You can choose the principal sounds and memorize them. I select the chirping of some insect, the calming of a cow, and the gurgling and splash of the water in the stream. Now I shall increase the tempo of my heartbeat and you listen to see what happens all around. Anastasia's heartbeat increased in frequency and right away the rhythm of sounds I could hear around me join in with a heightened tonality. That's astounding, simply incredible. I exclaim, what are you saying, Anastasia? Are they so sensitive to the rhythm of your heartbeat? Yes, everything, absolutely everything. A little blade of grass, a big tree, even the bugs. They all react to any change in the rhythm of my heart. The trees accelerate their inner processes and work harder to produce oxygen. 
Is this how all the plants and animals and people's environment react? I ask. No. In your world, they do not understand to whom they should react. And you do not try to make contact with them. Besides, you do not understand the purpose of such contact. And do not give them sufficient information about yourself. Something similar might happen between plants and the people who work on their little garden plots. If only people would do everything I outlined to you and imbue the seed with information about themselves and begin to communicate more consciously with their plants. Do you want me to show you what man will feel when he makes such contact? Of course I want you to. But how will you do that? I shall tune the rhythm of my heartbeat to yours and you will feel it. She slid her hand inside my shirt. Her warm palm slightly pressed against my chest. Little by little, little by little, her heart adjusted its tuning and began beating in the same rhythm as mine. And something most amazing happened. I felt an unusual pleasant sensation as though my mother and my relatives were right there beside me. A sense of softness and good health came over my body and my heart was filled with joy, freedom, and a whole new sense of creation. The range of surrounding sounds caressed me and communicated the truth not a truth comprehensible in all its detail, just something I felt intuitively. I had the impression that all the pleasing and joyous feelings I had ever experienced in my life were now merging into a single and wonderful sensation. Perhaps it is this sensation, sensation that is called happiness. But as soon as Anastasia began to change the rhythm of her heartbeat, the wonderful sensation started to leave me. I asked, more please, let me feel it some more, Anastasia. I cannot do that for long after all. I have my own rhythm. Even just a little bit more, I pleaded. And once again... Anastasia brought back the sensation of happiness just for a short time and then everything faded but not without leaving me with a small taste of the pleasant and radiant sensation as a memory of it. We remained silent for a while and then I felt like hearing Anastasia's voice again and I asked. Was it this good for the first people, Adam and Eve? You just lie around, enjoy life and prosper, everything at hand. Only it can become boring if there's nothing to do. Instead of answering my question, Anastasia asks one of her own. Tell me, Vladimir, do many people think of Adam? the first man as you thought just now? Probably the majority, but what was there for them to do in paradise? It was only later that men started to develop and thought of everything. Man developed throughout through labor. He became smarter thanks to labor. Yes, labor is needed. But the first man was infinitely smarter than his descendants today. And his labor was more meaningful. It demanded considerable intelligence, awareness, and will. But what did Adam do in paradise? Did he tend a garden? That is something that can be done today by any gardener not to mention plant breeding specialists. 
Nothing more is said in the Bible about Adam's activity. If the Bible told everything in detail, it would be impossible to read through it in a single human lifetime. One must understand the Bible. There is so much information behind each verse. Do you want to know what Adam did? I shall tell you. But first, remember that it is the Bible that tells us that God assigned Adam to give names and specify the purpose of every creature living on the earth. And he, Adam, did this. He did what all the scientific institution in the world taken together have not yet been able to do. Anastasia, do you turn to God yourself? Do you ask him for anything for yourself? What more can I ask when so much has already been given to me? It is my task to thank him and help him.